Hey everybody, welcome back to Health Matters. My name is Ryan O'Connor. Our guest this week is South African cricket royalty, a consistent presence in a number of South African teams. Uh, growing up in the Western Cape, played domestic cricket right here in this province for his home team, uh, the Cobras. But not only that, he is uh, he's played in a host of sides around the world. In 2017, JP Dermini retired from test cricket after playing 46 matches, uh, test matches between 2008 and 2017. In 2019, he announced his retirement from all forms of cricket and has filled obviously numerous off-pitch roles since the latest being a really exciting role as well. Ladies and gents, today we talk to him about his cricket journey and of course how he maintains a healthy lifestyle beyond his playing days. JP, welcome. O'Connor, good to see you. <laughs> now, let's talk at the very beginning for you. Let's talk about cricket. Um, you became a professional sportsman at such a young age. Um, obviously, a massive thrill and a challenge as well. Tell us about cricket. Where did the love for cricket f- come from? In the dusty roads of Stramfontein. Eh? <laughs> I mean, that's, that's really where it started. I think back to those days and I think uh, playing the game in the street in front of my grandmother's house using the black bins as yes, wickets. wickets. You know, when you hit the ball in neighbors' gardens, Go you're on. out. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's, that, that was where the, the journey started. And you, you try to uh, represent your heroes back then. Yeah. Um, you know, Jacques Cullis, Herschel Gibbs, those are the names that I certainly sure. tried to do. And I had the huge privilege of playing, of with, playing them. with them. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that was the love for the game and then filtered into playing uh, club cricket in Strandfontein yeah. at the age of nine years old. My very first game, first ball duck. I, I think I might have shared that with you before. Yeah. Uh, and I guess there was some maturity to that level of, of a nine-year-old where I thought, well, I can, I can only get better from here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's, that's where, it, where it started and, um, you know, got into it a lot more. Uh, ended up playing, uh, what is that, an 11, under 13, and 15, 17, and 19 provincial sure. teams. So yeah. uh, the journey has been exciting, but uh, many brews and bumps along the way, for sure. Absolutely. Heroic moments as well. And thinking back now, because there's obviously a generation of kids growing up that are addicted to digital devices. Mm-hmm. They're not getting out and playing. As you just mentioned, growing up, we played street cricket growing mm-hmm. up. But the health benefits of getting out there and just playing sport as a kid. I mean, there's there's massive benefits to mm. it. 100%. And, you know, when you think about health, uh, often one's mentality can go to the physical or, or just what you consume. Yes. But what I would like to add to that is, yeah. is the mental health. Yes. Um, and, and that, for me, in some way, is almost as important. Uh, and if you think back to our kids now growing yeah. up, as you mentioned there, there's a lot of devices that they're wanting to to get onto. Um, but just physically and mentally uh, being refreshed by the fact that you are physically being busy. Yes. Um, you're getting out there, um, you know, mentally, just, yeah. just trying to stay switched on. Absolutely. Um, so there's, there's many health benefits there. And, and we certainly as parents, young parents yeah. now for ourselves, we want to try and encourage it as best as possible. Um, we've just put a, a trampoline in, <laughs> hey, in our garden. Same. <laughs> I'm probably more on there than you. <laughs> I don't put on there. The kids, the kids tell me, Dad, don't break the trampoline. Lean, you're too big, <laughs> but I love it. You know, it's, it's it's. I guess it's from a from a father and daughter's perspective. It's yes. our yeah. physical activity yeah. that that we try to get out. So, so it's pretty cool. You won't believe it. My kids, my girls love cricket. Really? Now you know we're both dads to to girls. Yeah. My girls are obsessed by cricket. Okay. They they can name all the players, and I mean they're only six and seven. Uh, they go out there. Uh, one's a lefty, one's a right handy, <laughs> handed bat, and they, all, all they want to do is bat. None of them want to bowl. <laughs> so you have to bowl. I got to bowl, and then they still tell me, "Dad, that's a why. Two more of those, and I'm going to substitute you." I'm I, like, "To who? I, I'm the only one playing with you." I feel like a bad parent now because <laughs> my kids don't even understand the first rule of cricket. Really? And you calling about why? It's, yeah. Oh my word. Listen, some injuries are also part of the game, and we see it in the modern day uh, arena more so than ever because the cricketing schedule is one that you know. I mean, you were a part of the modern game. Um, there's really no break. It's flat out and demanding as any other sport. It's it's really one of the, the parts to the sport. Um, what advice do you have for young cricketers to help them deal with injuries? So I think first and foremost, we, we have to start with the process of surrounding ourselves with the right people yeah. uh, that can give us the advice that we need. Mm. So I think about whether you in the amateur world or in the professional world, gotcha. um, you know, guys like physiotherapists and mm. doctors and those kind of things, um, 
the, the, the new craze, I guess, which is an important one in, in the modern game is a, a catalyst or a psychologist, yes. um, which you. I think is a critical piece in, yeah. in particularly in the professional world. Yes. Um, so dealing with the pressures of, of success and failure. Yeah. Um, but when coming, coming back to injuries, uh, you know, it's important to have a doctor or a physio that, that you can see um, to advise you on, on the rehabilitation programs, yes. but also how do you strengthen certain areas of your body that are critical for you to perform because yeah. ultimately why do you play the sport yes it's for the love but ultimately you want to give your best and you yes. want to perform so yeah. you've got to give yourself the best chance i remember the frustration of when your achilles went and yeah. i remember that road to recovery and i was yeah. like with you i could sense that frustration because it's one of those injuries that don't that doesn't fix itself like no. in a short space of time when they go well your achilles is gone it's you go well doc uh, how many months and you go yeah. what yeah. that length of time and to remain a professional sportsman yeah. Through that and beyond, it's very mentally demanding as well, to your point earlier. 100%. And, you know, just thinking about that journey yeah. and to my point earlier about having the good, the right people around you, yes. uh, that support structure was critical because often what we do is we look at the future. Um, we look at how long is this going to take to your point. Sure. And essentially, it took me seven months to play again. Sure. Um, but we know the critical piece is staying in day by day yes. and doing the rehabilitation, going through the process. Through the process. Uh, I think I think back to the physiotherapist that I dealt with, Shane Jubar. I mean, he oh, was- Shane's a yeah, legend. Yeah, he's a legend, yeah, isn't yeah. he? And, and he was on my case literally every day. Yeah. And not just the physical activity that I needed to do, but just the support, yes. you know, having yeah. conversations about, I'm not feeling, I'm not feeling like this is working. Yeah. You know, he's talking you through the process of understanding that that will happen then and that will happen then. So it's a critical part of the of the journey. From injuries to supplements, and uh, you, you and I know you are a lot younger than me, but there comes a time also where you start to look at your life and go, Am I, is my body getting the right kind of things? Am I getting the right nutrients in it? Am I getting the right kind of vitamins? Now I find myself taking a nice balance of things every morning just so that I can get the required dose of not only my, 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 my supplements, but also that right boost of energy. Have you ever been uh, one to take like a, like a daily vitamin or a, mm -hmm. any kind of supplements in your career? There, there've been moments where, um, particularly in, in terms of what deficiencies I might might sure. be going through, yeah. um, or travel I, fatigue. I mean, you travel, yeah. so your your physio or the team doctor would yeah. tell you, "Listen, guys, take your vitamin C. Yeah. We need to be, you know, yeah. no one's going to get sick on this tour." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and you know, I think back to also traveling in different time zones. Yeah, um, and what we needed there to make sure that we get the sufficient sl sleep, sleep in. Yeah, um, but yes, vitamins did come into play. Uh, I think the latest one, and particularly in terms of the age now. <laughs> Uh, you know, magnesium becomes a, yes. a, an important one. Um, you know, just just making sure that I'm hydrating as, yeah. as well as I would like as well. Um, even though I'm coaching now, yes, yeah. we uh, maybe I'm not needed to be as fit and strong in terms of the performance, but I still need to perform for my team. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, we we do go through various uh, moments where, where where certain supplements become more important. So magnesium is certainly the, the latest one. You touched on a, a, something at the very beginning of this of this conversation, which is vitally important. Um, is not only the physical but the mental aspect of any sport. Yeah. Um, you've got a phenomenal ability, as do many top professional sportsmen, to be able to focus and focus and remain focused. I mean, everyone talks about how you you say I'm I. I Get goosebumps thinking about that Australian that mm. that 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 test, uh, the grit, the character, the mental strength. I mean, we we we're talking about the toughest opposition in the world in any sport mm. is Australia. Mm. Or uh, cl close place, New Zealand and England. Australia in Australia at the biggest cricket ground on earth, mm. being chirped at constantly <laughs> by a crowd of I think at the at on a daily basis that close on a hundred thousand people in that stadium every single day. You've got this youngster out there, South Africa have collapsed, literally. The Australians are chirping, hey, mate, hey, mate, oh, look at this youngster, JP. He doesn't have a chance, mate. <laughs> he goes out there, not only does he not have a chance, he not only does he have a chance, he obliterates single-handedly the Australians. And as a South African getting up early hours of the morning to watch Test Cricket, we go, oh, no, what's happening? Who is this guy? Single-handedly saving South Africa. Like I said, goose, goose, goose flesh. But it's the mental attitude you had. That is the, the uh, 
classic example of the uh, kind of a mental strength you needed, mm. never mind the capabilities you had, to push yourself through that mm. that chapter yeah. where South Africa really needed you. Um, what was your mindset when you went out? Let's talk. Yeah. Do you remember what you're thinking when you went out to bat? So I, I certainly do. Um, you know, I, just kind of park that for a second okay. and, and, and move a week earlier. All right. Um, so we had just beaten uh, Australia I- at Perth. Um, so that was a historic moment yes. for us. But if you look at the context there, uh, Ashwell Prince had gotten injured in that yes. just before that first test, yes. and then that's why I played. And going into the second test, in terms of that preparation, I was like, well, okay, he's probably going to play now. He's yeah, coming yeah. back in. So, you know, I just kind of went through the motions there. And then the day before the test match, um, they said, look, he's not ready yet. Yeah. I'm going to be playing. And then, you know, a sleep, sleepless night, no doubt. <laughs> um, but the, the space that where the team was in, the, the focus and the conversation was constantly trying to stay in the moment. Yes. It was ball by ball. Just stick with the process. No matter what the situation was around you, can you just focus on watching the ball? And, you know, essentially when you think about any sort of sporting code at high level, that's where you want to operate. They yeah. they they talk about in the zone. Mm. In the zone is literally just being present. Mm. Um, that's high performance. Is having the ability to switch on and switch off at the right times. Uh, I think back to to listening to a podcast of Johnny Wilkinson where yes. he speaks about his best moments in his life almost at that time was between the whistles because he had the ability to switch on to the now. Oh. And, and it, it speaks into to volumes of, of what we're trying to achieve as high-level sport, in high-level sports people. Yeah. Uh, it's just trying to stay in the moment. And mentally, if we can do that more often than not, we give ourselves the best chance to perform. And that, if I refer back to that 166 at Melbourne, it was literally that. Um, so as you said, 100,000 people, um, <sighs> you know, chirps here, right, left, right, and center. So can you just block that out and create this bubble around yourselves to say, right, I need to just watch this ball. Gee, that is, uh, listening to that, I mean, to think about that, uh, we get nervous when we've got three people on a golf course watching our swing. Uh, you <laughs> well, cannot you figure out to, the whole world is watching you and you focused in that moment, the moment where the ball leaves the hand and what you need to do and going through those processes. That is, and if we can apply that, I think, to any structure of our lives, to mm. business, uh, to uh, if you're listening to this podcast and you're watching this and you're thinking to yourself, man, mm. I'm battling at work, I can't focus. Well, take it play by play. Mm. Concentrate on being there, present mm. in that time. I think that's valuable life lessons. Mm. Um, Okay, with such a pressurized career, let's talk a little bit about about um, superstitions. Have you ever had, uh, and this is a weird conversation, we're going from like mental health to being superstitious um, and having things like um, like left pad, right pad, oh. right pad, left pad, box, whatever. I mean, oh. how, how did, did you have any of that? Any kind of cricketing or playing superstitions when you walk into a change room and go, no one sits there because that's where JP sits when he when he's here. No. Fortunately not. Uh, yeah. uh, I've played with some interesting yes. characters. Yeah. I think Neil McKenzie, Neil McKenzie comes Jeez. to mind. Um, where he wouldn't eat duck before <laughs> before a game because you'd get a duck. Uh, the toilet seats had to be up. Or I mean, it's crazy stuff. Um, <laughs> but I think for me, just to answer that question, I think what was critical was yeah. not necessarily superstition. Sure, it was routine. Ah, got you. Um, so routine. I think if you even if you think about your sure. kids, yeah, you know, having yeah. a sleep routine, it yeah. creates structure, right? Yes. So it, it's very similar context there. Um, so it felt natural to put the right pad on first and then, and then the left. Got you. And that was just routine, routine. to get you in the zone. Yeah. Got you. Okay. Um, let's talk about also a little bit about, and this is important, I want to, and I'll touch on the foundation as well and the, the, the new gig, but balance. You are such a balanced uh, human being. And uh, I look at you, I look at Brian and Banner and people that I know and, and whose families I know, and mm. I've been a part of their journey. Mm. Uh, I mean, I emceed your wedding. Mm. I've been a part of you and Sue, Sue's life for mm. forever, what your kids grow up mm. um I, I, you balance it so well and it's something that's very important it doesn't matter if you're a professional sportsman or a professional career person finding the right balance is vital and you've managed to do that how 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 do you manage that and how do you is it mentally again a preparing and going i've got to have time for, for family mm. got to have time for career mm. i've got to be able to i mean how does that structure work for you well it's interesting that that's the observation but it you know, I, I think if if you had to have conversations with many, uh, let's call it successful people, yeah, I, I think the the common theme would be that it's actually not that way, um, but yet we still every single day attempt to be better and better, right? 
So I think about this this idea of balance and and finding structure, um, which is a critical piece I think in in any home. Um, but it's being intentional. Sure. Um, so, so I, I give an example. So, if if I'm going to work now today, uh, when I'm getting home, uh, let's say I'm getting home at five o'clock. I think between five and eight p.m. Can I be intentional about being present? We're coming back to this point of being Got present, you. and I think that creates the the balance that we we all seek. Can yeah. I put my phone in the drawer yes. for three hours? Otherwise, it's going to be a distraction. I don't get it right all the time, <laughs> for sure, um, because you have this this need to to, to physically yeah, want to see, connected. be connected to the world. Yeah. Um, but again, it, I think it starts with being aware sure. of of where you're at and and what you're trying to achieve. Yeah. I think the, the the a great piece of advice that I got once you become aware, you can't be unaware. Yeah, I like, I like that. <laughs> you call me unaware. So, so the awareness is the first part. Yeah. All right, can you then put some some critical processes in place for you to to achieve what you're trying to achieve? Mm. So, I think that's where it starts in creating this balance. Um, you mentioned Sue there. I mean, she's a critical yeah. piece. Yes, yeah. um, in our family home, I think she's probably more balanced than I am. Um, but it's just communicating, isn't yeah. it? It's yeah. communicating around what you're experiencing, uh, how's your day been, um, trying to be as present as you can in terms of fatherhood. Yes. Um, and, and that's the attempt every single day. Now, besides the new gig that you've got, and we're excited about that because it means that you're back uh, uh, on TV again in terms of we get to see you and your talents being displayed as a coach to a, yeah. an incredible team. You also have a foundation that does really amazing work. I've yeah. been privileged to have seen that, that foundation in action. It's a massive part of who you are mm. when you decided to start playing cricket, to give back to another generation at mm. grassroots level yeah. of kids that want to play cricket. Well, you emceed that start that process as well, isn't it? Uh, again, what a journey it's been. It's been eight years now sure. where, you know, the essential part of why we started was to revive the game of cricket in Mitchell's Plain. Mm. You've got uh, 54 primary schools there, and there was only four playing when we started in 2015. <laughs> and to date, we've got 38. So it's it's been a great journey. But essentially, using cricket as a vehicle um, just to uplift the community and, and give – these young kids opportunities that ne they won't necessarily have, mm. um, but also giving them different perspectives in their decision making. Yes. So can we use cricket as a vehicle to say, you know what, what you see in front of you doesn't have to be your reality. You can make alternative choices that could potentially allow you to be successful in various things. Mm. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be a successful cricketer, um, but it could. the decisions you make now could influence the future. Um, sure. But essentially, you know, we also want to see some some great cricketers come out of Absolutely. it, and we've we've had the opportunity now to see the fruits oh. um, of it. Mikael Prince, who's just uh, represented South Africa yes. in nineteen, yes. has come out of the inception of of uh, the JP Twenty One Foundation. So that's been a great story, and seeing and following his journey yeah. over the last eight years has been awesome, and seeing him do well, uh, particularly in that SN nineteen tournament now has been has been really special. This has been really special. Ladies and gents, JP Dermany, a super incredible athlete, hell of a human being, great father, great husband, and proud to say a good mate of mine. Thanks for your time today. Thank mate. you.